Hello, welcome to Suzanne's live question and answer session. Thank you for taking part, Suzanne. Uh, and we will put all the questions and answers on our website afterwards for any of those that have missed this. So we're going to start off. Thank you for taking part as well, Suzanne. Uh, and also, we're just going to start off with uh, a question from David. He says, can I buy from a distance? Uh, yes, quite easy. Now, because of the pandemic, we had to, well, the motors had to learn to work uh, with lots of power of attorney and electronic signatures. So, yes, in fact, quite a few of the properties that I sell are by people who don't come over to even view the property. Um, there are surveyors here who can go and have a look for them. Um, obviously, all the properties that I have on the market have videos of them, photographs, Google. Um, and all the information that they can have. So people do buy without coming here. Uh, they can be sent a contract and a power of attorney document by uh, email. It's translated for them on the power of attorney document um, and then we talk through the contract. So no reason that you can't buy from a distance without coming over. Excellent. And another question from David as well. Can I buy if I'm not a resident? Yes, big question for lots of people. So yes, you can. You don't have to be resident. You never did have to be resident to buy property in France. You can buy and use the Schengen Agreement to be here for 90 days out of every 180. Um, if you're from uh, America, uh, Australia and Britain now, you'll need to be using that. If you're Dutch or in another European country, you can come and go as you please. Uh, so definitely you can, you don't have to be resident to enjoy your property as a holiday home. Okay, and, and linking on to that is a very common question that we have, is what are the visa requirements if you're not uh, a non-EU national, so if you're not a, a Dutch person? So particularly for our British clients, you can come on your 90 days, so you can do 90 days and then you have to return um, and that's any European country, so you can't just come to your French holiday home for 90 years and then go to Spain. You actually have to go back to the UK and you have to be there for 90 days as well. Um, you can apply for a long-term visitor visa, which will give you 180 days. Um, and you, that doesn't affect your Schengen entitlement, so you can actually be here and tailor your stays to when you want, rather than being governed by the 90-day rule. Um, so. There are visas, uh, outside that there are visas that you can apply for um, and we'll go on to that a little bit later on. Okay, that's great. Um, and also we would just add that we cannot advise on individual circumstances, can we, on the, on the visa because... Uh, there's lots of different visas that you can apply for, there are different conditions attached, you can apply for one way, you've got a working visa, employed or self-employed, you can be retired. Um, or you can agree to come here and not work for the first year whilst you submit and apply for your car residual. So lots of different requirements and depending on where you're coming from as well. Okie doke. Uh, another question is from Lynn. She's asking, uh, she'd like to know about the grants and financial aid for improving the house's insulation or heating. Um, what can be covered? Who is eligible? Are there any restrictions on how long you need to stay in a house to avoid any financial penalties? Okay, so the uh, main government driven uh, grant system is under the heading of Ma, Ma Prime Renova, and that is uh, talk to you about all the renovation grants. They've got their own website. Um, there are grants, and it has been extended into 2023. So it's looking for insulation work, so uh, windows, in roof insulation and changing your heating system as well to make you more energy efficient and less polluting. So yes, the grants are available. It does have to be your full-time main home, your main residence in most cases. Uh, if you are renting your property, uh, renting your property out through the French rental system, you can also apply for grants. If you resell your property within 10 years with certain grants, uh, for example, the ANA, A-N-A-H, um, grants that you've received, then you can be required to pay them back. So yes, the, the grants are still there, you can still apply from them. Usually it's done through a tax credit system. You have to be fiscally resident and it's done through a tax credit system. Um, and do make sure that your 
really researching the um, products that are being offered to you to make sure that one, they do comply um, because you will have to use a registered installer um, otherwise it won't be taken into consideration and you won't get your grant and unfortunately there are some scams around as well so just be very vigilant before you sign up to anything. Okay, thank you. And Lynn has also asked, is there an equivalent of the building survey in France? What sort of tests can you carry out before buying to find out whether there are any major, uh, major structural problems? Okay, so two different things going on there. The um, French sellers are obliged to give you a package of diagnostic reports when you're buying a property. So this is usually organised just when we've got a buyer for the property. At which time they will pay for an asbestos test, they'll look for lead in paintwork, the electrical installation test is covered, and any fixed gas installation is looked at as well. Um, and of course then also drainage. So in most places, well in all cases, uh, individual drainage, a septic tank is um, required to be inspected. And in most cases now, mains drainage is also uh, required to be inspected. If you as a buyer at that time wanted to ask for an etat parasitaire, for example, which looks at woodworm and uh, dry rot, uh, anything affecting the wood in your property, you could ask for that and you would have to pay for it. And there are also several RICS chartered English surveyors over here in this area, and certainly I can put you in touch with them and they can do a report for you as in English as you would expect in the UK. Thank you. Carl's just said that's very informative. Yeah, very uh, comprehensive uh, answer there. Alan has asked, I'm puzzled as to how the equivalent of council tax works in France. Uh, council taxes uh, in the UK. Uh, do rules change depending on region and how, where could we find more information on annual tax fees for a holiday home in France? Okay, so again, a few different things going on there. It is regional, it's decided by the mayor. Um, some of the areas recently, as you know, became regrouped so that Sourdeval, for example, has now six or seven other communes who are reliant on Sourdeval. And what they did is they looked at, at that time of the amalgamation, they looked at the, the range of um, tax foncier, for example, within that area, and they tried to even them out. So some saw a slight uh, reduction, some increase to bring them all onto a level. So the tax foncier is on the property and land itself, and there's another tax, which is the tax habitation. If you're buying a second home, you will have tax habitation to pay. If it's your main home, then you won't have that to pay. Um, and in, occasionally, where there's a, a shortage of housing in Paris or major cities, there is also a, another tax, which is on um, second homes. Okay, great stuff. And Gavin has asked, is there a retirement visa for France? Um, so, uh, Yes, there is. It's what, can one of the visas um, that you can apply for is to come here um, as a retired person. Um, you need to prove a certain level of income when you come over to make sure that you can sustain your life in France. And then you also need to have uh, private health cover for the first year. Once you're here, then you can start applying for the carte de séjour, which would secure your uh, stay in France, as it were. Okay. And Suze has asked, what are the rules for purchasing an additional plot for horses, for, uh, for example? Does it make a difference if the plot is not adjacent to the original plot? And is there a maximum for private individuals? Okay, so my advice would be always to find a property that has the land that you can buy at the same time as the property. It's not unheard of that you can buy land afterwards. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's attached or not attached. But the, the French farmers here, the SAFA, the rural um, organisation, make sure that the farmers have a first right of preemption on land. Um, they're far more likely to intervene and want to buy a parcel of land um, than they would be if it was a house with the land attached. So you may find that it's more difficult than you think to, to, to buy land separately after purchasing your initial property with a bit of land. Um, so yeah, ideally look for all of that at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no maximum for a private individual, although there are um, abundant uh, 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 fees to pay, if you like, to the MSA, which is the Rural um, Agricultural Society, if you're exploiting your land, whether you're British or French. Excellent. 
Uh, and the last question here is, is it possible to, for you to guide the whole process, including the formalities, um, the purchase the inspection, the solicitor, uh, and are you also a buying agent? Okay, so a buying agent is somebody who goes out and looks at other people's properties, um, and unfortunately I don't do that, I don't have time, I'm focused on selling the properties that I have on the market myself. Um, Yes, though, I do do everything from start to finish. So it's a proper hand-holding service. Um, you um, have access to the information that I know at all times. Um, you can call and get updates. I deal with the notaire for you um, and then feedback to you anything that you need to be doing. So you're not left uh, wondering what's happening and we do our best to ensure that it goes through very smoothly for you. And in fact, a lot of customers say it's actually easier than the buying process would be in the UK. Okay, brilliant. Thank you uh, to all people, that everybody that took part in this and for Suzanne for answering all your questions. Uh, and we will put everything on the website afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.